Good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, wherever you are. <laughs> Kathy Arbor here. Welcome to my studio. Um, I switched up times and uh, just, I've got company. So this evening suited me. I hope that wasn't um, an inconvenience for you guys, but it is what it is. So today we're going to be doing this beautiful sunset. Oh, so this is off of uh, Lake Huron, um, not too far from where, from where I live. And we are known all over the world for our sunsets. They're beautiful. And um, this one was particularly gorgeous. The beautiful, beautiful corals and yellows and purples and then that's my great niece um, taking an evening swim so i thought i'm gonna draw and paint that today so if you are wanting to paint along this one you don't really need uh, a traceable <laughs> it's just a little person right there that's about it and the only main thing is to get your uh, horizon line in properly and then um, do the water, basically. And then we'll put her on last. So I am going to use a mix of uh, colors that I have here. And there's... Uh, We'll be using Payne's Gray, uh, probably some Scarlet Lake by Windsor Newton, um, maybe Red Quinn or Quinacridone Red by Windsor Newton, and maybe some Dioxazine Purple by Core, some Henza Yellow by Core, and... that's about it actually so what I have done here I will put this over here so I can see what I'm doing and now as you know uh, references don't need to be the exact same thing they're just a reference so what I've done here is I've actually put a piece of washi tape where the um, horizon line would be and uh, that way I can make sure that it's straight. Hey, Doc, good to see you. Hope you're doing well. You're up late today. So I have some brushes here. These are the ones I'll probably be using. Um, one or the, or one, either one of these. Um, these are uh, Terry Harrison. Um, they're nice and um, fuzzy and they're a mix of uh, synthetic and a real um, hairs and they do a fantastic job for foliage or um, what I'm going to use it for is just putting a dry brush over the lake part and we'll see if that works. Um, I haven't done this one before so you'll be seeing me testing things out a little bit and of course I have my uh, silver black velvet one of my favorites and this is a number eight and then I also have a number six and this is a newer one it's a golden uh, natural uh, blend by silver and uh, this is a number four and they're a little bit uh, got a little bit more spring than the um, silver black velvet so it depends on what you like sometimes you need that spring um, and sometimes you need the softer type I'm always up late really oh gosh so you were a night owl your whole life <laughs> not me I'm somebody do you like getting up in the morning oh or are you a late sleeper So to start out, I'm going to be doing uh, a wash. This is uh, 
140 pound cold press paper by uh, Fabriano. And we're going to put a uh, wet into wet first just to get a little bit of the background color. So we're going to start off with the lightest and work our way to the darkest. So you can see it's pretty intense yellow here. It's almost into the gold color here. And then down right along the bottom, it's even darker, more, more into your orangey colors. So let's start off with putting in a light coat of that yellow. And first I want to put some water on my paper. So I'm going to get a, a little bit of a bigger brush just to do that. I'm old. Don't seem to need the sleep. <laughs> really? <laughs> so just You want to make sure you get all of the area wet, not just a little bit. You want it all wet because if there's any streaks of um, dry paper, your paint will not go there. So you got to make sure that it's evenly distributed. I'm just looking at the side view here. See the shine. All right. And then we're going to take some. Sienna or Hansa yellow medium. So I sprayed my palette before I came on just to get them a little bit softened up. And I'm just going to put some here. I prefer using a palette and not going from your color to your page. Okay, so now I want to put some water to that because I want it fairly loose, very, very um, light color. And I'm just going to, right over the top here, will be the lightest area. And then as we work our way down, we're going to get a little bit more um, intense in color. So I could actually put a little bit of uh, Indian Yellow by Core. In here, I think, yeah, we want a little bit warmer as we go down the bottom. So we'd have that beautiful color. Put a little bit more in there. Even some, maybe this, try some yellow ochre with that. I want it fairly warm. And just go right over the top. And then as we get down to the bottom here, I'm going to add a little bit of pyro red or pyro orange to the mix because it does go quite on the orangey side, right on the very bottom. And it, there's just a smidgen of real intense orange right on the horizon line. And maybe a little bit more. Here. A little bit in here. Just on the bottom there. Okay. Hey, Devin. Good to see you. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, did you get snow? I saw somebody showing snow. <laughs> that terrible S word. So let's, I'm going to take a little bit of this off. So all you have to do, I got a dog hair, is take your brush and paper towel and just take up some of this with your brush. Because I'm working on this uh, watercolor, I can take off color. If I was working in my sketchbook, say, I wouldn't be able to do that. It is fairly light right on the top here. So 
So I'm just going to take a bit of that off. That. Yes, yeah, got snow just a bit though. Oh, that's good. I bet you were kind of disappointed to see that when you woke up this morning. <laughs> Jeez. All right. So before we can um, go into the next step, we have to dry this because our clouds are going to be more defined. And if I were to put on the clouds on top of this wet, it would just spread out. It wouldn't be defined. So I'm going to use my hair dryer or heat gun here and dry it. You want to make sure that it's good and dry before we do the next step. It looks like it, it bled through. Well, maybe not. I don't see. Never know. Sometimes squashy tape works, sometimes it doesn't. All right, next step. So next, we are going to start putting in these clouds. So you can see that on the bottom areas of these clouds, it's darker. So the lightest part is on the top of the clouds. So we're going to put in the lighter part of this first. And uh, in that way, we can just add the darker in certain areas. Because you can't um, go from dark to light. You have to go from light to dark in watercolor most of the time. All right. And this can, uh, can have its uh, trial and error. <laughs> you have to work at this one. Uh, some... Sunsets are really difficult. This one isn't bad because there isn't blue in it. If there was blue and a lot of yellow, then it gets a little more tricky because blue and yellow make green and you don't want a green sky. So to make that um, mauve, I'm going to get some dioxazine purple. I'm just going to put it right here. It's a very, very powerful color. And then I'm going to get some Payne's Gray and mix in with it. I want it dulled down a little bit. And I got a spare piece of watercolor here. And we're going to see if we can get the color we want. Let's just, yeah, that's a pretty good color. So. Mm, could be almost on the more blue. See how um, it's a little bit not, it's too purple. It's a little bit more on the blue side. Not much, but we'll add a little bit more blue to that mix there. Now let's see if we can change it up. That's better. See the difference? I don't know if that's showing on the, it's more on a gray side, gray purple. Now, if you don't have Payne's Gray, you could also use Indigo to mix with that purple. All right, so now we want a really watered down color. And I want kind of, uh, there's wispy clouds in this, see here? So this is going to be a real light touch. And there's no uh, softening. They're more, um, you could spray it actually. I might try that, the wispy parts. And then just spray that area 
so that they kind of um, disperse in a weird way. <laughs> we'll see. So let's put that in. So in this corner, it is basically a cloud. There's no... And this is just the first layer. So I'm just kind of looking at the shapes of the clouds. So I'm going to just dot right here because I want this part kind of uh, a little bit. that and then maybe a few down here um a few in here and then i'm going to take my mister and spray it and see what happens awesome you don't need a lot now you can take your uh paper towel just mop up some of that She wanted uneven looking. Now it's not going to be the exact same cloud. So um, don't get stuck on trying to make it uh, identical to uh, the clouds you have in the photograph that you're doing. If you're, you can take a screenshot of um, my photograph here if you want and try it. I want it fairly, I need that one, that one a little bit. And dioxazine purple is a very, very staining um, watercolor. So you kind of have to be a little bit fast. Uh, let's do this side over here again. Just a few little bits right in here. And maybe right there. I'm going to put a little bit more color though. Try to make my um, spray a little bit less. Not bad. Okay. Take it up before it stains too much. Like that. Okay. All clouds are different, so don't worry, but you can make your own shapes if you wanted to. All right. So then it gets pretty easy. Uh, down here we basically have um, this area more or less all purple. And then but more darker along here. And we have a fair amount right in here. And it kind of goes into the pinks and stuff. But I'm just going to spray it. Just pick up a little bit of it there. OK. 
Okay. Let's get some more purple. More blue. Test out. A little more blue in it. There we go. I'm just following where I see in the photograph where the darkest areas are. Just adding a little bit of that dark, dark. And we're in here. And then this is still wet, but I'm going to put it in anyways. Just dabs. Okay, and then a little bit in here. It's fairly dark in there. And there's quite a bit in there. There. All right. Now remember, these dry lighter too. Okay. So now I can uh, start taking some away too. So now you gotta um, get it at the point where it's not just gonna run back. So you have to kind of let it dry a little bit. On the sides here, you can clean it up. You don't want that back run because it'll make a bloom. And then we have the light areas, so you can start taking away bits and these are the tops of some of the clouds. The bottoms are usually darker. So there's a fair amount in here. And with working with uh, dioxazine purple, you kind of have to be a little bit um, fast because it'll stain very, very quickly. If it's too dry, it's not going to come up. This one has a little bit on the center of the cloud, more uh, light areas. That's a hair again. <laughs> Dog hair. It's part of my life. Another area here that it's light. In there. you got to play with it a little bit. Don't rub the paper too much, though. You will get um, pilling. 
on your paper. That's not good. Uh, leave some dark around it, though. That gives you the dimension of the clouds, how they're overlapping. And like that. In there. Like that. And then look just a bit in here. Kind of the uh mm, the other colors start to shine more in there but we do need to take some of that out like that all right now um i'm gonna put in some of this pink so it's kind of a magenta coral all wrapped up in one um let's see We'll test some. So I'm going to take some of the Scarlet Lake here. See what we can make out of this one. And some orange or magenta. Maybe some magenta. What's that? Let's see what we get. Use some orange in it. Yeah, that's more more of the color I want. Can even put in some yellow in there. So now the uh, clouds. It's fairly um, intense. We're seeing, and there's actually some purple in, mixed in with this too, but we'll have to uh, play with this a little bit first. Experiment. Like I said, this is the first time I'm doing this, so this is all kind of experimenting. It's very, very intense down here. Maybe just a few little areas where that um, yellow's kind of peeking through. Not a lot. Almost goes into the orangey colors as you get down into this. I'm going to leave a little bit of and just a smidgen of that lighter orange underneath and this can go a little bit And I'm going to take some of that purple again, bring it down into this a little bit. Kind of mixes with the color a little. A 
we'll let it mix. on the top here. I don't want to cover up all of my um, yellow. Okay, let's dry that. Let's see what we get. All right, so as you can see how light it dries, so we need to intensify those colors again. This time I think I'm going to start on the bottom here, and I'm going to put a little bit um, magenta now into this. I'm just going to mix it with the orange that I had here. Now, it's basically I'm thinking of these orange areas as the lighter color. So I want to keep some of this orange in as the bright colors that we would be seeing. So we have quite a bit of this magenta color coming in here. And then I'm going to put a bit of purple in this also. This is one color, I would say it's more or less on the bottom part of this sunrise. Just kind of have to... Um, make some uh, clouds up. It's kind of hard to do the exact. So I just make it up as I go. I kind of kind of keep some of those cl um, clouds that are defined more as part of it, but more or less a lot of it is uh, made up. A little bit in here. Right along in the bottom part of this cloud. Got some pink in it. Now you could also use, mm, if you have a gouache, you could put gouache on here. I like using everything, basically. I just don't stick to uh, one color. I'm going to spray this. I want that to be a little bit.
just a hint of that color in there. Let it dry. I'm going to go back to the purple. And now I'm going to put in more of intense color. I'm going to leave some of the other color. It's, it's all about layers here. And then it gets dark in there too, along the sides here. And it kind of mixes with the orange. In there, that. A little bit down in here. Not as much though. Once it starts getting down in here, it goes into that um, orangey color. Like and then a little bit of this. I'm just going to put a little bit of this in here. Just to emphasize that a little bit more. Certain cloud shapes. Uh, in here, I think. Then some more purple, just on the top part of this one. That. Thanks, Devin. Uh, looks like it's too dark for you guys. Let's brighten it a little bit. Okay, maybe a little bit of, of uh, that. that. Yeah, that's better. Okay, 
Okay, so let's dry that now. All right, I'm just looking at it. I think I'm going to try and soften a little bit of this up here. Just wetting it with my brush. It's very difficult to, should have done that before, but it's just a lot. There. All right. A little bit more defining again. Looks good. Because you're you just have to keep doing it because. Uh, your colors do dry so much lighter and I, it is a little um, you kind of get a little nervous about adding deep deep colors but try and get over that like that I think that looks good okay let's Take off the tape. Hopefully it didn't bleed. Oh good. Didn't bleed. Awesome. I just well I no, that's pretty twirled. Let's see. I'm gonna see if I can reuse this. No. <laughs> it's not worth the aggravation. <laughs> so I want to do the ocean or ocean, the lake. And keep that line. So I'm going to put another, it's dry, so I'm going to put another piece of tape over top of this so I don't paint into it. Okay. All right. So again, light to dark. So as you can see, uh, we have a lot of dark in here, but a lot of um, reflection off of the sky. We have a little bit of um, orangey in here and there. Not a lot though. Um, slight amount right there. But I'm going to do mostly uh, soft, soft, very pale blue or Payne's gray, more of a gray. And then darken it as we go down there. And then we'll uh, add our dark tones on top of it is the idea. We'll see if it works. <laughs> so I'm going to use Payne's Gray again. I'm going to put it in there. And I want it fairly watered down. I'm going to take some of this over here and really water it down. Just want it so so light, and then I'm just going to go right across this whole area. Oops, 
something there. Now a little darker on this side. A lot darker right along the top there. And then let's just do a, quite a bit of dark in here. Like that. Okay. Let's get that over that hair again. Our dogs. Okay. And I want it a little bit darker down on, on the bottom here. A little darker. But I don't want um, definite hard lines. Okay. That should do it. Okay, so now we want to dry that. All right, so next we can add a little bit. It's just not one um, light and then dark. There's a mid-tone also. So you can take a little bit more of that Payne's Gray on it. I'm, I'm going to use a bigger brush here. So let's mix a little bit more of that. Okay, and... Let's see. That's a little that's a little dark. A little bit more water in there. Now I want to go across and I'm using the belly of my brush basically. And I'm going across the horizon. So you're basically uh, using the um, texture of your paper to help you with this part. And I think I'm a little bit too light. Is that better? I wonder. It was a bit light. It's darker than what you're seeing. Alrighty. Now I can go dark again, this time a, um, quite a bit darker. Do the same thing. Belly brush. This side will be a little bit darker.
Parker. And then right in here, there's a wave. And there's one in here. Get one there. And then just right in here, there's this wave just starting to come up. A bit of a wave in here. It's a little darker here where the shore is. And then this here can be darker. Right in here. Uh, and in here. Now you could take a little bit more of that Payne's gray. And there's a definite um, dark, dark here, right on the base of the wave, like that. It's quite dark. Okay, I'm just going to take a little bit of water, go underneath this wave here. And it'll just gradually soften. And then I'm going to take my smaller brush here and just take away some of this. paper towel. See if I can do it. Just a bit. Because there's a little bit of a um, crest of the wave happening right in there. Might have to get out some wash. Do you want that fairly soft? You could put salt on it, that would be another thing. Um, I'm just scrunching up my towel here. Let's see if I can take some of this off. That's not bad. Just a bit. Okay, this is just experimenting.
Just taking the darker color, kind of making the darker area underneath the wave and the crest of the white. You don't see it white white because it's being shadowed by the uh, wave. It's blocking the light from hitting the uh, There's a little bit of a dark edge there. And then you can kind of dab in a few little dots where you would have holes, basically. And this one doesn't really have that, um, but it does have a little bit more dark on it. Right in here. Uh, and needs to extend like that and I'm just gonna darken that soften that a little bit all right now I'm going to now this might totally wreck it <laughs> I don't know, but I want a really dark uh, line now. We're going to test it on the paper first, though. So I want that um, Payne's Gray. Don't want, yeah, that's gonna work, okay. I don't want definite. I just, just slightly going over. I just want a little bit of a darker. So it would be the darkest area. Holding my breath. A little darker in here on the shore and there's a little wave in here right there and then kind of a And I can put some lines, just a few. Up there would be um, closer together. And just very lightly going across.
All right. Now we have a little, little bit of reflection. Not much, but there is a little bit. So I want to dry this first. So the reflection is from the sky, and it would be a little bit on the yellow side in certain areas. So I want that Henza yellow watered down. Very light. Now we want to make sure this is good and dry, because this is blue, so you don't want um, your water turning green on you. So just a bit, not... A lot. There's um, just a, a tiny bit of that reflection from the sky. And then that, that nice um, kind of orangey color. And I kind of see that on a bit of the Just a smidge between here and then a bit on the bottom here maybe a little bit on the red side up here Well, that's probably all I need. It's just very, very, very slight. And then I'm going to take my brush again and just lift some of this here. Uh, let's see, actually. Right about here. We'll lift that. It's my rolled up. Nope, it's not going to lift. So I'm going to probably use some gouache to brighten that area up a little bit. So uh, let's see, where did I put that? some gouache here. Zinc white. And I don't want it pure white. So I'm going to put it in probably this here. A little bit of the purple. See if this will work. Well, actually, it should be more on the. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put a little bit of Payne's gray with that. Yeah, I don't like the purple in it. So let's put change it up. Add. Just gonna remove that. A little bit of Payne's Gray with it. Not much. You just want a bit. Just so that it's not um, a stark white. And then too much water on my brush. Just dot. Let's 
swirl, whatever. Right on here. It's mostly brighter on the top. I'm just dabbing. And it will pick up some of that Payne's Gray on the bottom, which is fine. And I'm going to put some on here too. Right in here. That should give it a little bit more definition of, of it uh, being a wave. Like that. And I think that's pretty much all I can do for now. I'm going to put a little bit more white on there because this would be the brightest areas. Okay. Um, you could even use a bit of that on this brush again, too. So just on the very ends and put some brighter highlights in if you want. Fairly All right, I think I need a little bit more dark in here. So let's put a little bit more of this Payne's Gray in, right in here. This is where the wave is coming on shore. And there's a little bit of shadow underneath it too. Uh, you could do the same for this one. You could put the curl in right there. A little bit of a curl going on. All right, so now I want to put her, her in. So very small little, and it's a silhouette, so um, you want it fairly opaque. So uh, thick consistency. So let's see, it's not very big. So these are fairly good size waves. You don't really see her um, nose or anything. You do see a bit of her chin. And her hair, she's got long hair. And just looking at the shape. Like 
that. Her little arm comes out like that. And then her hand kind of Uh, and then our leg goes down and just to the knee. She's got her other leg up. Like like that. She needs her. You could pencil this in and then do it if you don't uh, want to try and get it. Like that. I'm going to make her a little bit taller head. That. All right. And then, so oh, because I have that so dark, that makes the other stuff look light. So that's when you have to start adding a little bit more. In the darkest areas, just add a little bit more. I think I'm going to put some white in here. There's some. Waves go along here. Okay, and then that. Maybe some white in here. And her shadow. Which would be squiggly. That I think that looks pretty good. I'm just going to add a little bit. To this here. All right, I think that's probably as far as I can go. So let's heat that up and take off the border. All right. Not bad. 
looks vast because of the size she is. No, I just think this head is off shape. There. All right. So that's not too bad. I like it. Um, but again, practice. It, it takes a lot of practice. I am far from perfect in this. Now, with me, you know, I love um, adding something to it. <laughs> I am going to add, let's see, maybe even lighter than that. A uh, nice orange, I think. Yes, that one should do. Just there's some really intense orange areas. I don't know if this is not, it's still not dark enough or light enough. Let's see. Let's try this one. That, oh, I just put my hand in a wet spot. Um, that show up. Mm, no, I don't like that either. Mm. Let's try this pink. Nope, that's not. like such a certain color is it's going to um, take on some of the uh, dark undertones so it won't be exactly what you want uh, yeah might even need um Colored pencil or or not colored pencil, the um, marker or oh no that hmm yeah maybe colored pencil or something opaque so paint maybe uh, let's see what we got here colored orange. Um, Oh, this might might work. Let's see. I want to get that sunlit. I'll show you. Yeah, they're bright right there. That's what I want to put in. So and I can smear it with my finger. It's not gonna be a, a hard line. This might work. So We'd have a little bit right in here. And then smear it. Just want that bright look that's in some of these. Not all, but it's in some of them. I don't know. Let's try this one. Do I want? Oh, there we go. Orange, I want. So that's the play. Play, play, play.
Yeah, that's better. So mixed media watercolor, guys. There's a lot of it in there. So there's thicker areas and lighter areas. Kind of have to get a sunset and take a look at it. Watch how the, where's the lightest areas? And then play with it. And maybe a little bit in here. That's better, I think. Yeah, like that. And then a yellow. yellow. So there is this kind of yellow area on the very, very border. Really intense. It's kind of jagged looking on the very bottom. And then it kind of goes up a little bit into there. Uh, and right here a little bit in there And it will soak up some of that uh, color underneath from the watercolor, but it should enhance it a bit. Uh, well, we could see right in here, I think. Let's just add this color. See what we can do. Making this a little bit more jagged. There was a bit of clouds aren't smooth. They're kind of jagged looking. And if it's not covering it, you could use white, too. But the majority of it is uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. And a little bit in there. Just take it into here a little bit. And 
like that. Now you could go back over top of this if you want after it's dry and um, put a little bit of white on it. And it would, or even you could take your brush, let's see, and just while it's wet, smooth it. Uh, it out. Yeah, there we go. Uh, is this from a photo you took? It, yeah, um, my sister-in-law took it. It's on uh, Grand Bend. I don't know if you know Grand Bend. Yeah, that was one of the sunsets. We have the most gorgeous sunsets here. All right, so let's see what we got here. I'm going to take this up. I'm going to heat it up first. Go. There's the little sunset. So it's not exactly the same, but it's it's pretty good, I, I think. It's a reference, and that's uh, a little softer in here, but. I like the intensity. Is Grand Bend near London or Bedford? Um, Grand Bend is about forty minutes from London, roughly. Um, it's by Bayfield, Godridge, that area. In between Bayfield and Godridge. All right. So there's my experiment. I like it. It's not perfect, but it's good for the first one. <laughs> you know, for me, I like to do more than one. Uh, the first one, sometimes two, are just experimenting, and then um, you do. It sounds familiar. I'm sure my hubby knows where it is. Yeah, most people know where Grand Bend is if you lived in in uh, London area. <laughs> it's it was the party town. All right, so I'll let you guys go, and you have a fantastic uh, rest of your day. And we'll see you on Thursday, and we'll be doing probably um, one of my painting a day, paintings a day, <laughs> a painting a day. And uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to paint yet. All right, so take care, everyone. And uh, don't forget to enjoy the process of being creative. And... Uh, Get your mind off of all the craziness in the world. All right. Have a good one, everyone. Bye for now.